thanks. Wonderful um, pedigree, wonderful bloodline. Uh, give thanks. Welcome to to South Africa once again, and um, great to finally connect. You know, we I think we first met ten years, nine years, ten years, nine years ago on, on, on social media on Facebook. Um, and to me, you gifted me with the word Tisu uh, Anu Achu or Tisu Vanu Achu um, with the, the Ani Institute um, and, and, uh, and the contribution to our African cultural revolution. So it's great to have you with us here in South Africa today. Welcome. Mm. Uh, thank you. I mean, it's good to be here. It's good to walk the ground that my ancestors uh, uh, walked on. And, uh, you know, it's good that we've met in person now, you know. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, social media has got good things and, you know, it's got good things and it's got bad things. It depends how you use it. And I, I'm, I'm blessed and honored uh, to have uh, for me, you are one of the positive things or the progress, progressive things that happened to me on social media. You know, and for it to, you know, to come to this point where we actually meet in person, I think, I think it's a good, it was very necessary. No give thanks. No give thanks. Um, uh, like I said, welcome again. And um, <coughs> King Kush was informing me earlier that um, there are great chances of you uh, relocating to South Africa. Mm, yeah, I, I don't know if I would call it relocate <laughs> as such, but um, because I'm also evolving and growing, and I'm at a point in my life where I am uh, uh, spiritually, uh, mentally, and physically in constant flux, you know, where I'm not fixed. In, 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 in one state or at one point, you know, uh, I'll be living in South Africa, I'll be living in Zimbabwe, I'll be living in Eswatini, I'll be living in Tanzania, and I intend to be living in Cape Verde mm -hmm. as well. So um, it depends where, uh, with what I am doing, you know, uh, just like our ancestors, you know, they were never fixed. They lived where they want to live, you know, that's that's the direction that I want to take because I also want to to uh, one of my um, uh, one of my works is the rebuilding of the African family system and I can't do it when I'm in one place so I need to reconnect I need to reconnect with my brothers and sisters all over Africa I need to connect with them you know uh, all over the world so anyway I can be but what I can say is that um, uh, at this moment, I will be living in South Africa, I will also be living in Zimbabwe, and I will be living in uh, Eswatini, and uh, hopefully Tanzania and Cape Verde. Okay. Well, that sounds quite good. That is, uh, that is our continentalist spirit, mm -hmm. that the whole continent is our, is our turf, it's our home, it's our province. We don't recognize the borders. We shouldn't. Yeah, we shouldn't. <laughs> we shouldn't. Whenever we we're shouldn't. not at the table, mm -hmm. whenever we're part of the Berlin Conference in the Division of Africa into Borders, mm -hmm. we shouldn't and we don't we don't recognize them. And and it is mostly important for us to constantly demonstrate that cultural unity that we share as African people from Cape to Cairo, Morocco to Madagascar. But also, what is more even interesting is bringing into focus the African family system mm -hmm. that, that you mentioned now is part of the overall vision and mission uh, to reflect that. That is, that is basically the basic building block of our African is, is the family. It begins from the then to go to the clan, to the tribe, to the nation, uh, to the race as a whole, but that is the most important aspect of it is the family. And um, in our family system, under neo colonialism, 
has become neo-African, you know, the neo-African culture, which is a basic um, a result of neo-colonialism, which is basically not what it used to be, you know. Uh, it's a survivalist family. It's a, it's a families of people living in urban areas, families of people living in rural areas, families of, like we'll talk about urban areas like Soweto, uh, Umlaz in Danzani, um, Sashiro, Westenberg. In these places we call them married couples hostels. Because when we were dispossessed land and removed from our indigenous habitat and, and be made now to come into the urban area in order to work for the white men's tax, which now we impose tax on us, our livestock, uh, our everything, and they've taken over our land and our, our cattle and so forth. So they're imposing a tax, so you had to now come to the urban area to come and work for that tax. So in the process of that, and to work in the mines, to work in their industries, and to form part of their modernization and westernization in our continent. So the process of that brought about uh, these urban areas we call Soweto, and which also brought a lot of divisions. You get Africans who think coming from Soweto is like coming from heaven, mm -hmm. and those who come from Rural areas are backward Africans, so 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 there are expressions of that, you know, Emma Plasini, Emma Plasini, Moi Josi, Emma Moye, you know, all of that. So, uh, so it is important to reflect and to go back into the roots of our family, beyond urbanization, beyond uh, neocolonialism, and, and to see how it can enhance. The Africans currently incarcerated under this or within this neo-colonial prison of existence. So it would be quite interesting to get into the depth of your vision and your mission in that regard. And the ultimate liberatory trajectory of it yeah, ultimately, because I know that every course that we take in this uh, struggle is for ultimate total liberation of Africans. So it will be really interesting to get your mind, uh, the depth of your mind around it. So, um, so when you go all over Africa, and sometimes even in the diaspora, you find out uh, the problems we have are the same. The problems we have are the same because we are coming from one source and we've got the same spirituality, we've got the same culture, and we've got the same uh, 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 traditions, regardless of where imperialists or colonialists uh, took us. You know, uh, they did the same thing to us. The same thing that they did here in South Africa is the same thing they did in Zambia, it's the same thing they did in Tanzania, it's the same thing that they did in uh, Mozambique. When they came here, they found out that um, our strength evolves around family. So our spirituality evolves around family. Our culture and tradition, our rites of passage evolve around family. Uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, spirit, with spirituality, it starts with you as an individual. Because as, an individual, as individuals, we are building blocks of the family. As families, we are uh, building blocks of the home. As, as homes, we are building blocks of the community. As community, we are building blocks of the nation, and so on and so on. So what they did is they attacked the family system. You know? And when they attacked the family system, everything else fell apart. I mean, something that can sound as simple as uh, employment. You know, uh, during the colonial era, what they would do, if you stayed in uh, Soweto, they would give you maybe a job in Cape Town. So now when you are in Cape Town, you can no longer be a father to your kids. You can no longer be an uncle to your sister's uh, kids or your brother's kids. You can no longer be a brother, you know, to your siblings. You cannot play your family roles, you know, the things that keep the family intact, the relationships that keep the family intact. You can no longer play those roles because they have removed you from, the, from that environment. And they destroyed the entire culture 
and tradition and, and spirituality. And uh, in Zimbabwe, I'm, I'm quite sure it's also like that in some, in some areas here where neighbors would get the same uh, electricity system. Right. But the other one is what a welding machine. The other one doesn't even have a stove. But at the end of the month, you have to split the bill. The other person has got a garden, the other person doesn't have a garden, but at the end of the month, you have to split uh, the bill. And of course, the one who's not using much electricity or much water is not going to be happy. You know, because they are not also get, getting any proceeds from the business that you are running uh, in your home, and yet you are, sharing, you are sharing the bill. So they did these things that look very small, you know, but in the long run, those things were very damaging and they keep us fighting. They keep, they, they keep us apart. So I've been uh, uh, doing what I do for the past um, maybe 29, 30 years. And I feel tired and drained because we have so many problems that need to be solved as, uh, as an people, as van, as Bantu, as Antu. We've got, you know, so many problems that we got and it's, it's, it's draining. You can't even you know, begin to think about it. And then uh, one day I sat down, I'm like, what is the source of all these problems? You know, what is the source, you know, how can we resolve this without spreading ourselves too thin and not trying to do much? And I became aware that all we need to do as people is to be build our family system because the family system is the one that is um, uh, 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 creating individuals that we are putting into the community so when you see uh, uh, negative people or toxic people or negative behavior or toxic uh, behavior in the community those individuals are coming from a family and once they are in the community it's difficult to solve it, you know but you can actually focus on the family so that the family starts churning out uh, um, um, uh, fully developed and evolved people in terms of uh, our values and our principles and our, you know, uh, our roles and responsibilities. So now most of my work is uh, directed towards the uh, family. And for me, we are, related, we are related by blood and not by nationality. So when I'm talking about family, I'm not talking about just your mother and your father and your sister or your mother's brother or your father's sister. I'm talking about bloodlines. You know, I'm from Zimbabwe, but I've got closer blood relations with other bloodlines in South Africa than the other bloodlines in Zimbabwe. And today in Zimbabwe, the bloodlines in Zimbabwe have closer that uh, ties with bloodlines in Tanzania more than the other bloodlines in Zimbabwe. So living in the same country or living in the same nation does not mean you are related by blood. I mean, you can be related somewhere down the, you know, down the line because at one point, I think Southern Africa only had two ancestors. At one point, we had two ancestors. You know, uh, I will speak of Mapungubwe. Mapungubwe was not a capital of South Africa. Mapungubwe is not owned by South Africa. Mapungubwe belongs to the entire Southern Africa up to Tanzania. And when people moved to Zimbabwe or to Great Zimbabwe, Great Zimbabwe is not owned by Zimbabweans. Most people who were at Great Zimbabwe are not in Zimbabwe today. Great Zimbabwe was the capital of the entire Southern Africa up to up to so when we are looking up to East Africa in parts of West Africa, so when we are looking at our blood relations, we are not confining them. Uh, we are not confining them to our current border like political uh, borderlines. If we have to fix the family system, it has to follow the bloodline and not the border. So here we are talking more of the bloodline uh, than the borderline. I remember the same situation they are having it in Kenya between the border of Kenya and, and Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. You have the Oromos on one side of the border and the Oromos on the other side, on the Kenyan side and the mm -hmm. Ethiopian side. Uh, the same thing is happening in, in, in Northwest. Mm -hmm. You have the Bahuruti on the side of South Africa and the Bahuruti on the side of Botswana. Mm -hmm. the, in the, in the, the same thing is happening in South Africa. There are more Botswana in South Africa than in Botswana. 
It was only about two million Botswana, but in South Africa, the whole half of Houting is Botswana. Yeah. The whole Northwest is Botswana. Yeah. The same is happening in Swaziland. There are more Swazis in South Africa than in Swaziland. And the same about Lesotho. There are more uh, Basotho in South Africa than in Lesotho. The whole Orange Free State is Basotho. The whole Val here, Spokane, all Sharpville is Basotho people. So it's confirming what you're saying that is we're dealing with bloodline and borderline because this transcend borders. Mm. And that is why you find that the language of Botswana is an official language in South Africa. The language of Lesotho is an official language in South Africa. The language of um, uh, uh, Swaziland is an official language in South Africa. Swati is official here, Zulu, uh, um, Sutu is official here, Setswana is official here, Tsonga, which also is dominantly in Mozambique, is official or come from Mozambique, Gaza, Nguyen, descendants, and so forth. It's, it's official here. But also, it's coming again to confirm your Southern African kingdom or Southern African polarity that we belong to, which Mapungubu was its capital city, which uh, Great Zimbabwe was its capital city, uh, as it keep on shifting power from one particular dynasty the Mambos and so forth, and, and, and the next dynasty. So it is actually very important what you're pointing that uh, it is attempted on a political level, but it's not working, like SADC. Mm. You know, like now you hear of the SADC Troika and SADC this and that. It, it is, I don't know, it is because of its own, only political, it's not cultural, it's not, it's not, uh, it, it's not bloodline. It's it's just, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't project or show our knowledge, uh, our, our knowledge systems, you know, is very academic and, uh, uh, and the Western. It's a very academic and the Western. Um,